So my name is Scott Knapper. I am a research scientist with the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization, or VEDO, and I'm also a professor within the College of Medicine within the Department of Biochemistry, Microbiology, and Immunology. There's always been two things that have absolutely fascinated me, and that's proteins and infectious diseases. Proteins in the sense that you could have these seemingly simple strands of amino acids that could fold up into these intricate, complex structures to perform biological functions that are about as close to magic as you're going to find in the world. And then infectious diseases, the idea that you can take these tiny little entities, too small to be seen with the eye, but how they can take down an organism, how they can take down a society. So with those two interests, it's not too surprising that I got interested in the prion diseases. Now, normally when we think about infectious diseases, we think about bacteria, we think about viruses. What we have with the prion diseases is the idea that a protein can cause an infection. So you can have a, a normal protein within your body that folds in a particular way to perform a beneficial function, but it can misfold into a different pattern that has new characteristics. And in this case, that it's pathological. So with the prion diseases that they cause fatal, untreatable neurodegenerative diseases, but also that they're infectious. So when the misfolded form encounters the properly folded form, it causes it to misfold and the whole thing keeps going. So the prion diseases were initially discovered within cannibalistic tribes of Papua New Guinea, but they turned out to have further reaching implications. When we think about the, the mad cow crisis, that was prion diseases. When we think about chronic wasting disease that's currently spreading through North American elk and deer, that's also a prion disease. So the prion disease has really redefined how we think about proteins and how we think about infectious diseases. And it turns out that wasn't the only surprise they had for us. It turns out that some of the most common and debilitating diseases of our time are caused in this prion-like mechanism. So things like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's, ALS, are all caused by the misfolding of a protein into an alternate conformation that's self-propagating and has these um, pathological characteristics to it. So what my lab has been involved with is trying to develop vaccines for those types of diseases. And this is a great challenge for two reasons. Uh, first, you have to make sure that the immune response you're inducing is going to be specific to the misfolded form. So you have to identify targets that are only exposed in the misfolded conformation. We call those disease-specific epitopes. So if you imagine this being the properly folded and this being the misfolded, you might want to target the thumb. So my group has been involved in trying to identify and optimize these disease-specific epitopes. The other major challenge is that because these are self-proteins, the immune system has been taught to ignore them. So you have to find a way to, to trick the immune system with your vaccine to induce these responses against these self-targets. And we can do that by looking at different types of carrier proteins, as well as different types of adjuvants. And we've developed a number of vaccines for the prion diseases, for ALS, and for Parkinson's disease that are showing some really strong proof of principle evidence that this is a viable way to be able to develop vaccines to help to address some of these critical challenges to society. So the, the recent funding from the Western Brain Institute is going to bring together four Canadian universities. We're going to have University of Saskatchewan with UBC, U of T, and Western bringing together our expertise to be able to take these um, disease-specific epitopes that have been developed for these thinucleans and to be able to translate them into vaccines that will hopefully be of therapeutic potential. So we're tremendously excited to be a part of this project.